What's going on guys? Today in this video, I'm gonna be telling you guys why I prefer to use the DJI Ronin M over the Ronin S. It's a couple different reasons why, but uh, we'll get into it within this video. So before we even dive into this video, I wanna give a shout out to the sponsors of this episode, the lovely people over at Squarespace. If you guys have no idea what Squarespace is, it's the all-in-one platform for pretty much everything relative to creating a website. They have domains, they have templates. It's just a really easy and fun place to be if you're relatively interested in starting a website. Aside from the themes and templates, they also have 24 seven customer support. So if you ever find yourself in a gym where you don't know what's going on with your website, you can just hit them up right in the chat and I'll hit you right back. So if you're interested in bettering your online presence with the website, make sure you guys head over to squarespace.com right now and start your free trial. You can also head over to squarespace.com forward slash YC image and put 10% off your first purchase. Let's get into this video though. So this video is gonna be as straightforward as I can possibly be. So yesterday I went out and originally this video was gonna be the Ronin M versus the Ronin S. I planned on going out and filming the same sort of shots with both gimbals, some straight on shots, some track tracking shots, some revolving shots, just basic gimbal movements. But while I was doing it, I just wasn't feeling the process and I also felt like the video was just plain pointless. Hold on. <laughs> All right, that's better. All right, so while I was doing that video, I just realized it's just plain pointless because I'm gonna be as straightforward as I can be. As crazy and as one-sided as a lot of people tend to be with gimbals, they're all the same, man. All these gimbals do the same thing. They're all here to stabilize your footage. And I think the majority of them do a good job at this. So me trying to shoot the same shots with the Ronin M and the Ronin S was basically just me showing you guys some stabilized footage at the end of the day. You guys wouldn't be able to tell the difference between these shots if I didn't put a name on them. And pretty much all gimbals have problems. Gimbals are not, gimbals are not perfect, man. All gimbals have micro jitters. They all kind of tweak out at moments. And I think the majority of people who use gimbals also stabilize their footage to a certain extent. This is just me being as real as possible. Like me, if I'm going to be using this on a professional project and I see that it's not as smooth as I want it to be, I'm going to throw some light stabilization on it. So, I mean, you pair a gimbal with light stabilization, at the end of the day, they're all gonna be fairly smooth. And the majority of the shots that I shoot on the gimbal anyway is a shot on my GH5 with in-body image stabilization on. So that's gonna smooth out a lot of these kinks from these gimbals anyway. So the majority of people using gimbals have in-body image stabilization. These gimbals are all good at the end of the day. This is the Ronin S and this is the GH5 with the Sigma 18 and 35 on here as well. And I know a lot of people were asking, can this balance this? Yes, this balances this, no problem at all. It's no obstruction between the motors and the camera, nothing. So if you're interested in this, with this setup, it works. This, this is my problem. Now, before I even tell you, the way I like to use my gimbals is with roll on. Now, the reason for this is I'm a fan of the way like glide cams and steady cams look. I love the fluid motion and I feel like gimbals just provide a very sterile and like stale movement with them being completely level on the horizon at all times. So I like to enable my roll when I'm shooting. And this is at all times. I love to use rolls. So this is why I have a problem with the way these work. So when I'm using roll on this, it works perfectly fine until I want to use roll and also pan at the same time. So take this for an example. Say I was going down and I wanted to smoothly transition into a shot that was a little bit lower, but I also wanted to roll and pan at the same time. This is what happens. And this is just not with this one. This is with pretty much every pistol grip gimbal. It does some weird stuff. So when I go to do this motion, I'm coming down and I'm rolling and I also want to turn. The gimbal does, you see that? The gimbal does not know what to do. It's like it can't roll and like pan at the same time. I'll show it to you one more time, look. You see that? That's weird as hell, right? So, all right, I'm gonna try to get on the other side. So this is me trying to roll and also rotate the gimbal. It's just like very jerky and weird. Like I can't even explain it. It does weird stuff, so. Let me take it back to the perfect position, push this twice. It's weird, it just does weird stuff, man. They just do weird things. Now, hold on, let me show you the Ronin M and how the Ronin M is constructed. So I don't have a camera on here, but I don't need a camera to demonstrate what I'm trying to say. So this is the Ronin M, of course, you can see a camera will be right here mounted onto it. And you can see it's nothing obstructing the motion. It does full range of motion on pretty much every axis. It's nothing in the way. Now. The problem with the pistol grip gimbal wasn't necessarily that it was something in the way. It's just something with the motors and the way they tend to work with that motion. Now, you can see right here that if I rotate this too much, it's gonna hit this. It's gonna hit it. It's no obstruction on the Ronin M within any motion that the gimbal is programmed to do. And I think that this is why this is recognizing this motion as something that's not gonna work. You see that? 
Every time I try to come into a hallway with a smooth roll and I also try to pan with it, it just does that weird motion right there where it's just like, nah, we're not doing that. So another reason why I really, really, really dislike using these gimbals for my professional work is the underslung mode. So even getting to underslung mode is a difficulty. So I got to put my screen in. I got to hold the gimbal. I got to flip it over. So now we're in the underslung mode. I got to use the joystick and it's in the reverse mode which is weird. All right, so we got this. This is like the most uncomfortable way to hold a gimbal. Like with the Ronin M, it has the handle on the top, which makes it a lot better to get those down low angles. And I also just feel like these gimbals don't really work that well in this mode when you're trying to sweep them as close to the ground as you can. It just tends to do a lot of vibration and it's just weird. Like, I don't get it. I just hate this motion right here. It's such a strange motion. So I prefer to have the handle on the top of the gimbal when I'm doing these down low shots. That's another reason why I hate it. Woo, woo, see this? Strange, hold on. Let me put this down because it's freaking heavy. So that's my beef with using pistol grip gimbals. Now this isn't a disc to the Ronin S itself. This is just a disc to pretty much all pistol grip gimbals. I just don't like the range of motion that they do. And I feel like even though no gimbals are perfect, they all tweak out a little bit. These tend to tweak out a little bit more. And this is with the Crane 2, this is the Crane V2. This is with everything. This is with just the pistol grip gimbal line itself. So now at the end of the day, all of these gimbals are the same. They all stabilize your footage. They're all good. They're also gonna all do these things good. It's nothing wrong with any of these gimbals. If you're trying to move in slowly and get some nice smooth shots, you can do this on any gimbal. A Crane 2, a Crane V2, a A2000, uh, it doesn't matter. The only reason that I purchased this is because I've already been using DJI products and I just know what I'm getting myself into. I like the fact that you can tweak the motor stiffness. It's just a product that I've been using for three years and something that I'm used to. So this is why. All these gimbals are good. So there it is. This isn't me telling you to buy Ronin M over Ronin S. I mean, both of these things can handle very, very, very heavy setups. They're both going to get you smooth footage, but this is just me telling you why I prefer to use this system. At the end of the day, it's really all going to depend on what you're doing. If you're doing a lot of traveling, you're not going to want to pick up a Ronin M. It's big. You're going to have to take a stand. Me, I shoot music videos. I have a lot of time to bring in a stand and put the gimbal down when I'm playing a shot. So when I'm setting up a shot. So if you're in my feel in my position the Ronin that might benefit you a little bit more it also distributes the weight a lot better because of the double handlebar setup and the way the overall build of it the top handle is just better to me personally for music video production if you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you even a little bit on why I tend to prefer this over the pistol grip gimbals drop this a like also let me know down in the comments which one you prefer let me know what's your gimbal of choice and let me know why I'm interested to see why I'm out guys peace